Again, my name's Kevin Moyer. I'm a bridge engineer with the bridge division. And I will be talking about our precast overhang panels. This is the second generation. I won't really touch on the first generation, um, but let's begin. We'll talk about the details, kind of boring. I have some good pictures, so we'll get that to that. Uh, fabrication, the first bridge that we did the second generation on, and then our second generation, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And then any questions? This is an end panel, just like we have on our bridges, we have that thickened end region and the beginning of a span unit and the end of a span unit. Well, this panel takes care of that. We have a densification of steel. Um, as you'll see here, this little hatched area is a region that we can leave out to put the SEJ or our armor joint if need be. Um, you can see the densification of steel. The panels vary width-wise from six feet to eight feet. That's to do to transportation issues. <coughs> the lengths vary due based on the girder spacing and the overhang uh, width. This is just the interior panel. It's same panel, just less steel. And then you can see the gap region, which a lot better pictures. It's kind of hard to understand that gap until you see a picture of the panel. Um, here we have that gap that I was talking about. It's a full depth, full width. All the panels are full depth except for a, a region where there's a ledge. And that's just so we can integrate the panel so they can act as one unit. Um, you'll see here leveling bolts there and there. Those are so we just level the panels up so they're all nice and fairly smooth so we had a good transition between panels. The foam here, which is a polyethylene, was originally specced out as a polyethylene, and we'll get back to that. We actually changed it to polyurethane, and I'll get into that here in a little bit to tell you why. Here's a, we call it a Z-bar. Basically, it's a bar just to keep that, we weld it to the R-bar of the girders. That's just to keep that panel stable while we're placing concrete, while we're setting, uh, setting the panels. Again, this is basically a layout, how we would lay the panels out on a bridge. This view is the reinforcing that we're actually going to install at the site, not the actual reinforcing that's in the panel. You can see here, this is the densification of steel that we would normally put in we're not carrying it out that whole length of that, or that whole width of that panel. It's, it's just a waste of steel. We don't need it. And here is just the regular panels with the actual steel that's in it. Um, just to go over, our reinforcing in the interior panels is the same reinforcing, same reinforcing, same spacing as we would have in a normal deck. Through the gap region, however, we have a number eight bar that's on top and bottom, and that's just to keep that gap stable during handling and concrete placement. And that's a fabrication plant. This is just a panel before concrete placement, no forms. You can see that they used epoxy coated steel on these panels. This is a finished panel. The fabricator came back to us. We always envisioned that the concrete would be placed all in one lift. The fabricator didn't think they could do that, so they su suggested, asked if they could do it, the two lift concrete placement, and we said yes, but they had to have some kind of um, reinforcing to integrate the two lifts, which they did, and it worked out, panels worked out really well. This is basically a finished, and I'm, what I'm showing you here, which is gonna raise its ugly head here in a little bit, especially in this region, is the, the, the amount of form work that's needed especially up here in this region. Um, the finish is a brush finish, just to match whatever, since that is the writing surface, to match whatever is allowed by TxDOT. They didn't quite do a good enough job screening that concrete, so it, there was some dips in the concrete, which raised its ugly head later on, but for the most part, the panels were really well made. Um, the fabricator's comments and this is gonna lead into the second version of this generation. 
the notch in the overhang region, which I pointed out, I'll go back, this, sorry, this region right here, it had to be formed custom every time that they did a panel. It couldn't be, they couldn't do a pre-made form for that region just because of the amount of steel that's there. So moving forward, we're gonna get rid of that region. Um, and the fabricator said if there was enough volume for these panels that they would actually invest money in custom for, or in forms to continue forward so they could, these panels could be mass made quicker, easier, which would be a cheaper, cheaper panel. And the leveling bolt system, um, it's expensive. If it's epoxy coated steel, it has to be galvanized. We have a solution to that problem in the works and it has to do with getting rid of that notch. This is the first bridge that was used on. It's on FM 726 and over Brushy Creek in Marion County. As you see, there's Lake of the Pines. It's a beautiful area. It was a really beautiful place to go visit. I spent quite a bit of time up there helping the contractor install these and place the concrete. It was a nine, it's a two 90 foot span bridge. Overall width is 34 feet. The rail type was the T223 and there was no skew on it. There's a, this is the view of the bridge looking west. As you can see, there's something very important that you find on most bridges before the concrete is placed, or the deck concrete is placed. There's no overhang panels, or overhang brackets, I'm sorry. No overhang brackets, which should speed up the construction and also becomes a safe, safer work environment. You lessen your fall hazard. This is the polyurethane foam that's used as the dam to keep the concrete underneath the panels. Um, originally it was supposed to be, a, like I mentioned, a polyethylene. The contractor bought the wrong foam. We went ahead with this. As long as the adhesive that's supposed to be used didn't adversely react with it, and we found out later it didn't work really well. As you can see, the foam is compressed, and we want that compression. We want that foam. The foam is not used to hold that panel up. The foam is used as a dam. That's all it's used for. These are the panels being placed. Nothing really remarkable here other than the fact that they're not wearing any fall protection. <laughs> um, as you can see here, there's, they're gonna have grout pads. They're actually gonna keep the panel, once they level the panels up, they'll put grout pads in and that's what to keep the panels at the right elevation that they need. There's that gap region I was talking about, a lot more visible. Um, you can see there, there's the dam. There's the ledges I was talking about. That's to integrate the panels so we can keep them acting as one unit. That was the, this is the Z bar I was talking about. It's welded to the R bar of the, of the girder. And again, that's just to keep that panel from moving adversely or slipping off into the drink. Don't want that. These are the grout pads, these are the leveling pads. We didn't allow them to use the leveling pads with the, the, to keep the panel up at the right level. We, I, we're not real, I wasn't real comfortable allowing them to use the bolts because it's just, they're not, they weren't stiff enough, I didn't think. So we went ahead, we had, they had to find a different way to keep the panel at the right level. They could either use the grout pads or whatever method they chose as long as it didn't adversely affect the system. The first band that they placed concrete, they used the longitudinal screed. Worked really well, although there were some issues later on. Um, as you can see, they placed the concrete here. That was all placed by hand, screeded, floated, and they'll end up brushing it by hand, of course. And then they'll, when they place the center concrete, they'll go ahead and screed it. Where they had issues with the longitudinal screed is, when they got over to this region, they had to do a lot of work as soon as they lifted that screed up to get that concrete leveled out to where they needed it and liked it. Of course, they had a place to push it, but that was, they, they worked pretty hard getting that concrete. 
done the way they want it. This is just before brush. They put their um, curing compound down. This is the good way. If Is Ralph Brown in here? To quote Ralph Brown, some good Aggie engineering went on here. <laughs> these little bridges, these were, it was a very simple fix to a, a, a problem that could have been really complicated. This, they used a transverse street. This worked really great. When they got to the end, two guys lifted it off, it was done. They took the crane and lifted it, moved it the rest of the way. The other screed, of course, they had to get a screed to lift, or they had to get the crane to lift it off. So there was that issue. This worked really well. I was really impressed with it. And as you can see, they placed the concrete in the center first. So basically, they took that dead load deck and they deflected those beams to basically where it's going to end up. There it is. It's at the end. They pick it up and they set it off. Crane comes in and this, it, it, it worked great. And there was very little work. Once they had that concrete there, they just pushed it off when they had it to the level they wanted it. This is the finished after the brush with the curing compound. As you can see, no leaks, no blowouts. This was really a good, the foam worked really well and we required pencil vibrators instead of the normal vib vibratory units to consolidate the concrete in that gap region and it, wherever that foam was being used as the dam. Worked great, no blowouts, even though we had issues with the adhesive. The first span that they placed the panels on, they used liquid nails instead of the approved heat adhesive. Well, it might have worked all right, however, they would squirt the liquid nails down, go get a piece of foam. Well, don't forget, this is summer in Texas. <laughs> the, the adhesive would actually form a skin, and they just set the foam down. They didn't push the foam down. They didn't allow the foam to become one with that adhesive. Luckily, it didn't become a problem on that span. However, on the next span, they, we told them, no, you need to use the appropriate adhesive. Um, here's another little defect that came that we found later on looking at the bridge. Um, this is in the panel, the panel concrete, not the actual the cast in place concrete. And the only thing we can think just by looking at this crack, the only thing we can think that is from is they place, when they placed the panel concrete, it was a little too cured. It was a little bit beyond the plasticity and it ended up cracking. Doesn't seem to have affected the performance of the bridge or the deck, so it's something just we need to keep an eye on. But concrete cracks, so there's the finished bridge. The area engineer decided that they, they were going to go ahead and mill over the, where the cast in place concrete and the panel concrete was. Was it needed? Maybe for ride quality, ride quality, but from my understanding, it wasn't all that bad, but they went ahead and ground it anyway. There's the finished bridge uh, side profile. Nice looking bridge. Chris Miller, he's not here, but he's the one that actually ended up designing it, and Jamie Ferris is the one that signed off on it. Um, contractors' comments. Didn't like, didn't dislike, like anything new. <laughs> they always, you know, they're, they're, they're going to complain about some stuff and there's always going to be some issues. Um, but they did see the potential. They did see the potential of not having to put up or wreck overhang brackets. And it was a convenient work platform. As soon as you set it, it's a work platform. Put your, put your barrier up so you don't fall off the edge, edge of the bridge and you're good to go. Um, lifting loops little too close to the concrete where they where they were needed and they having a hard time getting that clevis into there so that was one issue it was like okay that's an easy fix I however cursed the concrete I cursed the project every time I showed up for concrete placement it was always an hour and a half to two hour wait both those 
spans took about four hours to place the concrete. Normally, it should have only taken an hour and a half to two hours, but the wait for the concrete kept on adding time, adding time. Um, and I know that it was only one concrete provider there, so they were kind of over a barrel, to say the least. Um, to add the concrete, the panels actually took about six hours to place per span. That could have been shortened. That was about 15 minutes per panel. That probably could have been shortened to five to 10 minutes due to proper planning and proper equipment. Um, going forward, generation 2.2, uh, removal of the notch. And also we're gonna, we're keeping one leveling pad but we're gonna remove the two leveling pads that are over in the, in the overhang region. Um, we're finding a different way that we can level up and possibly get rid of using the grout pads, at least in the overhang region. Questions? I know we have one question. Yes? Do the bolts have to remain? Or no, the bolt. It's up to your, it's up to the contractor's option. The bolts can be left. However, if epoxy coated reinforcing is used, those bolts have to be galvanized. If, but you can leave them either way. It's up to you. I'll, this. If you spin a standard bolt out of there, do you grout the whole set? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it, you're not going to grout it. You're going to have concrete that's going to fill it. Because that's in, that's in the lower, that's in that ledge region. Now, nope. You have the, that's why you have those grout pads. That's why the grout, it's the purpose of those grout pads. Now, if you if you did it right and you ran those bolts down far enough so you have the clear cover, you can leave them in place and be done. That's up. This contractor chose not to. Right back there first. Oh, sorry. Uh, he asked if it could be used just for straight bridges. At this point in time, yes. Um, if we would do a curved bridge, depends on the radius. If it was too tight of a radius, you would have to have custom panels made. There couldn't. You would actually have to do the cords. If the radius was, I had a bridge that I was looking at using these on. It was a fairly large bridge and it had a really large radius. I was shot down, but it, it laying the panels out physic or on the computer screen, it looked like it would work. There would be a little bit of a gap, but again, we can fill that gap. That's easy enough to do. But as it stands right now, as long as the race, the race is too tight. No. Yeah. Well, we have. Okay, he's asking about the cold joint between the precast and the deck. No, and here's why. When we get to the, that ledge, that ledge is so we can integrate the panels. Well, if you look at our PCP panels, we have a cold joint there too. But then we're going to put concrete that's going to be a continuous concrete over top of that. And it's the same thing with the overhang panels. Yes, they are full depth, but we have that ledge region where we put reinforcing across to control that if there is going to be a crack form due to that cold joint. One more. I want to say something about you, you had to have, use special vibrators. Was that to get the concrete underneath? That's, yeah, that's so we can get concrete underneath to consolidate the concrete underneath the panel, but we didn't want a normal size vibrator because it would have created too much in a possible blowout. The pencil vibrator is a little bit smaller. It doesn't create as much vibration, so there isn't a, as much force being put on that foam. But we're getting that concrete underneath there so we can create that ledge. 